Okay. Yeah, we can uh, see the screen. Yeah, can you can hear us? Okay. So I want to give their status update. Tao, can you hear us? Uh, their target um, date for the release 1.1, 1 .1, as far as I know from last week, uh, is not decided yet, but it's sometime in um, February, right? Uh, that's for sure. And uh, from security team perspective, we are going to support um, SBS for the workloads. And uh, uh, beyond that, we also have support for the ingress gateway search manager, which is uh, uh, there, um, you don't need to, when you have like multiple certs for the ingress gateway, uh, you don't need to add more. Sorry, there's some chat. <laughs> so basically, I turned off my microphone. Sorry, I can't turn it off. Let me let me just talk, and then you, you guys can <laughs> talk later. <laughs> um, can you mute it? If you can, I, I don't know. I think only you, one. Everyone mute um, this one. Speaker and mic. Hello? Yes. So now it's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Th th that's because we have another computer that, that is not that's muted. Good. Oh, okay. So that's, I don't know why. Um, the Ingress Gateway Search Manager enables you to um, read the certificates from um, their um, Kubernetes secret uh, dynamically, and it doesn't require you to restart, doesn't require a hot restart of the ingress gateway to be able to load more certs or delete certs because it's um, delivered through SDS now. Uh, that's a, another feature. Um, the third feature is uh, the vault integration. Um, we have the vault integration at the um, node agent level. So um, in that scenario, you don't need to have the um, Citadel to um, issue you their certificates for workload to workload communication. You can um, directly hook up with Vault, use your node agent, and then the node agent to the envoys through SDS. So that's the third thing we are going to um, enable for um, release 1.1. .1. So Li Min, do you have any update from the um, policy side for 1.1 .1 new features? You can oh. give some more brief. Um, oh, for for one point one. So from uh, authorization policy side, yeah, we have added some support like the group support. So uh, we can validate the group claim, uh, which are okay. coded in the George token. So it can be an array, and you can specify uh, the. Specify the group name and authentic policy, and uh, it will validate the George, uh, George group. And uh, we also added the TCP level RBAC support. Young Ming added that. Yeah, so, so currently, uh, ECD authorization not only support HTTP protocol, but also support TCP level protocol. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the main update. There's another update about the JOT. Oh. So, we support it to uh, allow you to exclude some passes from the JOT authentication. Um, a couple of users are asking this feature because they want to whitelist some of the, of the paths, for example, the snatch health or snatch status report from the JOT authentication. And now you can put those passes in the JOT policy configuration and uh, whitelist them from the JOT authentication, and uh, it's uh, it's ready in 1.1. 1 .1. All right. Yeah. yeah. By the way, we have new uh, policy proposal for both authentication policy and authentication policy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have shared this doc to the community, but uh, maybe next time uh, mm -hmm. we can we can go through the the new proposal. Okay. Sure. That's good. Um. Um, 
I see there's a, a proposal. So for this part, the status part, do you have any questions? So for your information, for 1.1, .1, the SDS support will be optional. Um, you still can use the um, Lexi uh, secret volume mount. Um, and the SDS is opt-in. Um, by, by default, it's opt-out. And um, yeah, for the control plan, we are still, for the control plan uh, components such as uh, pilot, um, mixer, um, Prometheus, like those components and the galley, they are still using their uh, secret volume mount. They are not using SDS yet. Uh, we will um, also uh, enable them to use SDS um, after 1.1, .1, maybe 1.11, yeah. So uh, regarding to their third item, so let's, uh, <clears throat> Let's talk about third item first because this one is uh, just a status update. So the third item um, uh, is asking about the Istio CNI plugin, how far off from production and has been uh, reviewed by Istio security group. So uh, I checked with their Istio networking team because this feature is mainly about uh, Istio networking. Um, it's in alpha state now. It was developed by um, the Cisco, pe Cisco people. And um, uh, on Istio team in Google, uh, on our side, the networking team has not fully tested the feature yet. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So, so um, we consider it as an um, alpha stage, early stage. Um, and if you want to get more information, you can, I posted their um, work group agenda here. You can see in last year on November and uh, October, they did a demo uh -huh. and you can follow up that demo. Um, and you, if you have more questions, you can directly um, ask in their working group. So far, this feature is pretty orthogonal to uh, our security. So that means, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, what they have uh, implemented should be working uh, with uh, our current Istio security solutions. Okay, yeah, I, I'll definitely follow up on that one. This particular case was like, hey, where we are providing the net admin capability to the namespace and then and mm -hmm. any container within the namespace we're able to kind of claim the capability and that we saw that as a security issue and then there was a proposal from Red Hat to um, something released to your network controller or something. Uh, then we want to know which route the community is picking up, and then I, I can go ahead and I can ask a network community to get more information. Sure. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, so, any questions about this? Any more questions about this item? <clears throat> Okay, so um, I don't know uh, <laughs> whose name, um, oh, Scott. Scott? Scott, okay. So Scott, are you, um, can you present this documentation? Um, sure. Thank you. Let me see. You can switch to your screen. Uh, I cannot screen share while other participant is sharing. So oh, I let me stop share. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Can you see that now? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Um, so this is just a, a simple proposal. Um, to allow the authentication of uh, opaque tokens like API key. Um, it's really just a, uh, a protocol that would be um, used to communicate with any service that can provide API key verification. Um, I want to show basically um, 
basically it would just be an addition to the existing policy uh, that would have a, an API key um, uh, key. <laughs> um, and then uh, the information would have a location uh, to access the API key from, well, a list of locations. So wherever it gets it first uh, from a header query or from a claim, a claim would come from um, a JWT token or an OAuth token that was processed before this. Um, and then some verifier information as to where, what the endpoint is to contact uh, to resolve that uh, API key. Um, the, let's see, um, basically the way it would work is really just, um, it would, it would allow the, uh, the existing uh, JWT token or OAuth token processing to go first. So it could generate its claims. Uh, then if there's an API key verification process, uh, it would run. Um, the, uh, the JWT token or the OAuth token in its claims can have a claim that is the API key, in which case uh, that could be pulled from there and then verified. Um, and this is, this is a, a requirement for some uh, places that don't want to pass an API key directly on the request, but uh, still require a verification of an API key as opposed to including the uh, claim information directly in the JWT token. Um, basically what Wait, happens- can you then, say that again? Uh, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. They don't want to put the API key in the request. Right. So they have a they have a JWT token uh -huh. um, in the request. Okay. And they they want to uh, include the API key in the JWT token. Okay. So it, it is in the request. It's just not sort of directly in the request. It's not it's directly header, it's sort of in the wrapped request. up inside the JWT token. Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. Got you. Thanks. Um, so so uh, as as I mentioned up here, one of the the locations can be from a claim, and you specify the claim that it's coming from. Um, and basically what happens is uh, after the auth processing is done, if, if, uh, if that's required, um, the API key processing is done. Um, the, it basically just posts a request to the endpoint that is specified. Um, if it's a valid key, it should return a, uh, uh, a string map basically. Um, of you know, string to string, so a claims list like uh, like you would find in the JWT token or in the OAuth token. Um, the claims would then be appended to the existing claims. Um, if there are any conflicts, it would be a, a simple replace of those. That could potentially be uh, parameterized so that we could uh, do something else um, other than uh, replace, but for now it seemed like the easiest thing. Um, and if it's not correct, the, then you, you would just return a, uh, an error code. Um, that's basically it. Um, the rest is just the specifics of the API. Um, there's also a comment here that, that we should honor uh, cache control so that that information can be cached for a certain period of time. Um, yeah, and it's just implemented as part of the uh, authentication uh, processing. So I'm just looking for uh, people to take a take a look, provide feedback if they have it, so we, we can move forward. So, what is the uh, the sort of end use of of these claims, right? So you, you go, you you verify the API key, you append some claims. And then is, is the right. idea that those claims then go to the authorization system and is controlled by, by normal RBAC or do those have to go to the end uh, like application that's trying to be accessed or what, what happens to those claims after we generate? Uh, um, right, so in general, um, it would be the same as you would expect with the JWT token or anything else, an OAuth token. Um, basically, 
what is going to happen is uh, in the specific case of API management, um, there's going to be a, a well-known claim that allows it to tell which APIs it has access to. Um, there's nothing special about the API key authentication though. Um, that, could, that information could be passed directly in the JWT token or the OAuth information. Um, and it really doesn't have anything specific to do with authentication or authorization other than um, that those claims would be made available. All, all the claims. So there, there's Sorry, no specific. Made available for, to what? Uh, the same as they are currently, right? So um, currently, all those claims are made available in the request auth claims for Mixer. Um, some, uh, I'm not sure if all of them are available in um, to RBAC, um, but at least uh, I know some well-known ones are. Um, yes, the, uh, to answer, yeah, let me answer your Go ahead. Uh, so API key, you can just consider it as an opaque token. It's similar to JWT. It's just uh, for JWT, you can just uh, decode it. Um, anybody can decode it. But for API key, uh, you actually need to call this call into an endpoint in order to decode it. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just trying to understand the, the use case here, right? Like, I, I, the, the I, I get that. Yeah, I think that's your question. All the claims will be passed to other, similar to John. So can I just jump in? Why wouldn't we just have this as a token exchange service with the same API as the AP token design? Because it just strikes me as it's a point where we want to normalize back to a jot because we can handle JOTs already. Why, why don't we have an API key to JOT token exchange? Uh, so it's targeted for different use cases. Uh, some API management would like to use API key. And uh, like some users use JOT token, and some users use uh, opaque token. So, so the token content, the difference is the token content may not be visible to everybody. So it's just to address different use cases. You can see uh, it's basically extension to authentication policy. Other than JOT, we add another type, which is called API key. Yeah, I think I understand the use case is different. I think the question is more on the API side, why they cannot be the same API compared to the token exchange. Oh, it's, it's orthogonal to AP token. So the uh, API key claim can also be included in AP token. So internally, we'll just have AP token. But yeah, so that, that was my point. Was yeah, so the point is the API can be the same, right? The API can be the same as, uh, as I mean, the, the verifier API, like you have, you send a token to the external service and return a set of claim. That sounds like similar to the token exchange. Um, it's different. Right, so token exchange, you don't need to send to an external endpoint. Basically, the token service is a well-known service for the whole mesh. Uh, but the but verifier here, the endpoint is uh, any arbitrary endpoint you can send this token to. Yeah, it can be any arbitrary endpoint, but if that arbitrary endpoint implemented the same API, as the existing API, then yeah, surely then the, it makes it much easier because we've just got a standardized API for exchanging some type of token for a token that we understand natively. And so we, it makes it easy just then to add other implementations, whether it's API tokens or something completely different in future. Maybe it's SAML or something weird like that. Um, yeah, so, so, this so that was my <laughs> question. This is different from AP token. AP token is to uh, to get any uh, external credential. It can be API key, it can be JOT token. And uh, after exchange, we get a JOT, uh, AP token in the JOT format. But this is, uh, this uh, policy is for validating the opaque token. So 
um, basically it's for a different purpose. Yeah, so but the API sounds like same. API is not the same. Yeah, but the question is why why can't it be the same? Like why does it have to be a different API? Uh, I think there are several differences, right? So first, for AP token, the token service is a well-known service. So the entire mesh share one token service. Well, I think I think that so well that that's only applied to the endpoint. Like you can say that token token exchange is a like shared service, and it it is a well-known before. But the like the what the request looks like and what the response looks like can be the same. No, the re response is not the same. This for this uh, validation for this uh, API key validation, the response is a set of claims. It's not a another job token. But what? Well, but, 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 but why couldn't it be that? Yeah, but job token is basically claim plus sig signature, and why couldn't they can be the same? <clears throat> and for AP token, we actually. In include not only the exchange token but other properties right we have very yeah so i think that only make that ap token exchange is more than more generic than this service uh but like you can fit this like verifier endpoint to ap token format right yeah but this verifier is the uh, um type uh um So this verifier is per service. Every service can specify its own verifier, right? And AP token has to be one per mesh. Yeah, so that, that that's a like configuration, how to configure the like AP token and the verifier, but like the response and request can be the same. That does put an additional burden on the provider to create a JOT token as opposed to just returning a JSON set of claims. If you return a non, uh signed jot it essentially just uh like json base 64 encoded yeah i can see the the point about using the token exchange it kind of makes sense to me but i also just wanted to mention there's there's another draft for the token introspection endpoint that seems to suit the purpose pretty well i, I know that You've allowed for configuring of arbitrary um, paths um, on a per implementation basis, but I don't know if the introspection spec gives you enough to um, return the claims that you would want from a, a non-JOT of off two token. Yeah, I would say uh, token introspect endpoint is, uh, um, is uh, very similar to this APIP approach. But yeah, uh, for, for that one, it's, yeah, I actually discussed with Scott, uh, should we combine the API key validation with the opaque token validation? Basically, the token uh, introspect endpoints is uh, a standard URL for validating the opaque token. Yeah, token introspection is already like standardized. And so I think the point is like, we don't want to invent a new uh, format or uh, the service for this purpose? Yeah, but that um, basically requiring the client to choose API key as an opaque token. Right? The endpoint may not implement the introspect endpoint. Uh, I think that would be almost the same, but we can choose them as different types. So yeah, I, I, I looked at the introspection too. Um, but it, it looked like it's closely tied into OAuth and not um, not just open for uh, use for just a, a simple token. Yeah, agreed. I guess in terms of the OAuth 2 spec, you can kind of use any token format that you want, if I understand correctly. So I guess yeah. conceptually, the way I'm thinking, it's like, well, an API key, is that a token? Sure. It's like some <laughs> weird base 64 encoded GIF a token? Maybe. Sure. I don't know. So maybe it's okay.
Yeah, I mean, the, the, other, the other thing that I was attempting to do is uh, keep it just as simple as, as humanly or machinely possible um, so that there's, there's, no, there's no flow that you have to follow. There's no, um, you know, kind of unusual requirement. So if you have an API key server, you can probably uh, implement this, you know, in a couple hours, um, if that. How common is this um, API key inside Jot uh, mechanism? I don't know how common it is, um, but it's been mentioned a number of times uh, from the Apigee side uh, where the clients do have this kind of uh, process where they yeah. didn't want to include, um, they didn't want to include the, the claims, uh, they didn't want to include claims directly into uh, the JOT token. Um, so they wanted to be able to resolve that. Um, and they, I, my own guess is that they didn't want to provide, uh, create a burden on consumers to provide two tokens, um, a JOT token and an API key token in a request. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I can't answer your question directly. I can only just say that it, it was a requirement that, that was mentioned. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, basically the way I'm thinking about this is that like, in some ways, it almost feels a little too specialized, uh, kind of for for what it does, right? Like if you if without that sort of like uh, pull it out of a jot thing, it's basically like oh, get a value out of a header, go query some server with that header value, and then get some claims back. So it's just like it's you know calling it an API key is almost like sort of uh, uh, telling people sort of more than than what's actually going on it's just it's just an opaque token right like some opaque yes. token api um and so i i there's an appeal to me of like trying to write these these configuration options and things like that in in a, a generic and in a more generic and flexible way if that's possible but this whole like sort of burying it in a jot thing and then you have like more claims that are coming out like <laughs> you could imagine going like uh, very deep with it, very deeply nested, right? Like, oh, I have I have some jot that gives me some claims. One of those claims is another opaque thing that gives me more claims. Maybe one of those claims is another opaque. Th I like it. It just sort of feels like, wait a minute, what what's going on here? Is is there real? Is there always a bottom at at sort of uh, at, at too deep um, in this in this nesting, or or um, do we need to be sort of more generic here? I mean, you can always imagine <laughs> some sort of uh, recursive flow like that. Um, oh yeah, and but, so like implementing recursive flows is not very difficult for machines, um, and and so that that's kind of my question: Is this just a generic recursive flow, or or is it really an API key inside a JOT, and that's the the only sort of uh, encapsulated case that we have to care about? The only one I know of uh, is, Fair is one deep, but um, yeah, I I don't have a use case for what you're talking about, but um, you could imagine it. Um, and and your other point is is well taken that perhaps it shouldn't be labeled API key. Perhaps it could just be labeled some sort of opaque token or something like that. Um, yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. So I think that that I may already know the answer to this question, but I'll ask it anyway, uh, just to kind of get get your take on it. You know, if the use case is that um, this is going to be resolved in some claims and those claims are going to be processed by Mixer, um, why not just do the whole thing in Mixer? You have like one Mixer, uh, whatever they call them, filters that goes and resolves the claims, creates a new set of attributes which are consumed by something else, um, or and like it, 
or and making so, so like Mixer is ultimately going to be making some decision about do I allow this this request because it's making a valid like API call. Why not just do it all there? Why sort of separate it out into this sort of two step process where you've got a you know you're adding another uh, uh, network call and response to resolve this key, et cetera. Um, I got a little confused there. Uh, it, uh, uh, I, I understand. So originally, my 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 first um, cut at this was actually to do it as an attribute, attribute producing adapter, and just you know be done with it there. Um, but it fits very well with authentication, right? Because it does exactly the same thing. It takes a token from the request. And it pre presents a set of claims that can be used throughout the system. Um, one of the reasons why it's better in authentication is because those claims, if if you do it through, well, as I understand it anyway, uh, if you do it through an attribute producing adapter, I don't think it's available to uh, authorization. Yeah. Um, so I mean that that would be one reason. Um, but Ultimately, um, I mean, it's it's just uh, it's there's a symmetry there for it to be with authentication, um, especially since uh, adapters have limitations that that uh, that authentication doesn't have to deal with. Yeah, so I don't know. Go ahead. That makes sense. That, that's kind of what I what I thought the answer was going to be is that like, well, you know, we've had this design principle that authentication and authorization should be separate. So we want to actually like build build that in. Yeah, it's just the one type of authentication. So it makes sense for every authentication. Uh, authentication. I mean, in in you know, Mixer v2 world, um, you can kind of do anything you want. Um, but right now, it seems like it fits the best with authentication. Yeah, uh, regarding the comments about AP Cosa, I think uh, maybe next time I can share, I have some thoughts um, of how the AP token configure look like. Maybe the next time I can share about that. I think it's uh, orthogonal to the API key validation. Yeah, and I, actually, I was I, unrelated. Well, tangentially related. Um, I, I had hoped uh, to be able to actually use AP token to encode some of these claims to be passed into the system, uh, as opposed to as you know putting things in a header for the target to intercept and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, it sounds like the, the biggest uh, question is, you know, can we possibly shoehorn this thing into um, the AP token uh, API or into this uh, token exchange in OAuth? Um, it didn't seem like it fit very well to me, um, but I'm perfectly willing to, uh, to believe that perhaps I didn't understand, uh, those particular formats well enough. Um, yeah, I would uh, prefer separate APIP and the OS token. And for all token, maybe we can use a standard interest back endpoint. And for API key, you can specify any endpoint. And uh, API key is actually a standard term in uh, Open API. So hey, Lemon, I think it would be helpful um, if you could uh, try and maybe record some of your thoughts about about why it makes sense uh, to to keep them uh, separate. Um, either in this doc or or uh, in in like the API token doc or 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 just posting on the on the secure like in the security uh, part of 
part of disgust. I mean, I think that like my instincts are 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 uh, that as well that they they should be separate. But I think we want to we want to like actually kind of try and express you know in detail what the motivation is for for keeping them distinct. Yeah, actually, we also had a debate on that. So I think it makes sense to write down several pros and cons, like yeah, cell points, and we can um, like consider about it. Yeah. Keep them separate, on, I think. So do you need any further comments put into the doc, or are you happy with just what was said? Sorry, who are you asking? Uh, whoever's going to be generating um, uh, the use cases or what or what we've just spoken about why we could use whether we can use the same API or not would you like any of the questions that have been raised to be added to the doc um, that's been um, published or are you happy with just the discussion and the notes from the meeting oh, I'm, I'm happy for anybody to go ahead and, and add questions. Uh, you might have specific questions that uh, that, that, that uh, I don't remember <laughs> later or, or were not captured. Um, I think I think the, the point is well taken to add a section on the alternative, right? So um, I, I think we definitely want to do that. Um, so if you have anything you can add would be helpful. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. Um, so, is there any other items we want to discuss, bring up, or do you have plans for next meeting? I think we are for next meeting. We are going to discuss about the new design for the policy. Or yeah, we have several agendas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or we can follow up on this. We also follow up on this one. Yeah. Sure. And good. Lemon, did you say there was also a new design for the authentication policy? Oh, uh, yeah, I believe the doc is already shared. So. Okay, cool. I'll make sure that I've actually seen that. Yeah, you can put that into the agenda. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, Lay or DM will put it. Cool. Okay, sounds good. All right. I think, uh, yeah, if we don't have anything else to discuss today, we can uh, finish the meeting. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.